Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here in this little container is um, what I plan to feed my worms. And besides the bin that's out here on the bench, I've got another bin that I want to feed. It's another bin that's the same age as this bin here. 158 days of age. Last time checked in on 11 days ago when there was 21 weeks of age. That was 147 days of age, meaning another 11, 158 days at which time feeding number 14 was administered and these uh, banana peels and pieces of watermelon rind along with some coffee and some worm chow that I've got off on the side, maybe some bedding. Those are the things that I plan on making into feeding number 15. So now the other novelty item going on in these bins is the fact that I had fed a number of feedings ago some raw potato peels. Raw potato peels that already had a little bit of growth visible on them you know sometimes when you take an old potato um, uh, out, of, out of your potato supply <laughs> in your kitchen and you notice it's been sitting there so long that there starts to grow a little kind of a little potato chit is what they call it I believe and um, so these potato peels had chits growing on them and a lot of the foods that I give the worms you know such as what they're getting here today is all stuff that came from my freezer However, the potato chit rich peels that they got was not frozen, which means that those pieces of potato peel were ripe to just continue growing. And the last time we came in here, we already noticed how the, the chits had developed into actual little stalks and sprouts. And we attempted to break up those pieces of um, potato peel that had that obvious growth going on on them. But we didn't do a very thorough job, it seems, because it's, you know, it's continuing here. This is interesting as well. This must have been one of the pieces of um, growth that I tried to break up into pieces last time. And then out of the side of that started a new shoot. <laughs> interesting. So um, it does seem like I've got to be a little bit more aggressive on, you know, stopping this stuff from continuing to grow. Not that it's really that big of a problem. It's almost like a little bit of a novelty here, too. You could see this. I think, I'm pretty sure last time we came in here, this coffee filter was still in pretty good shape. It was how we were indicating where we last fed. See, here's some of the potato peel that I'm referring to. Here, too, you could see, once again, a little shoot growing out of the side of it. And some, on the opposite end, I guess some roots trying to grow. So, I don't know, I'm not really sure what else I can do other than just maybe keep breaking this stuff up a little bit, giving it more exposure to the surrounding materials so that maybe bacteria and fungi and other things can sort of take over and really finally begin breaking this vegetable matter down so the worms can perhaps someday use it as food. I don't know, some of these pieces that I could see little tiny thin roots trying to grow from and little shoots popping out of also at the same time clearly show worm activity within them which confuses me because I always thought that it was um you know only those types of material though you know the worms only go for stuff that's clearly already in the decomposition phase not stuff that's actively attempting to grow so here once again all I'm really trying to do is further mangle these bits of <laughs> uh, potato peel so that maybe they'll stop growing. This is the stem of a banana. Interesting. So yeah, the last feeding did consist of banana peels and a few chunks of moldy bread and maybe not a whole lot more. That's the reason I thought that after 11 days they might be due for another feeding. I guess I was also a little bit curious to see how these potato peels and chits and growth were coming along. I, I did sort of expect to see ongoing root development and shoot growth. But I, you know, I also feel like I should be attempting to put that stuff to an end, you know, because that's not the purpose of having put this potato in here. It was meant to come in here as worm food, not as stuff that was going to turn into little potato plants here in my worm bin. So whatever, I don't think we have to be overly concerned with it. It just seemed like the 
right thing to do to try to disrupt any of that growth that we encountered there to sort of break it up a bit if we could and perhaps one of these days the stuff will actually start to de deteriorate to the point where the worms can rip into it <laughs> as a food source so let's see I suppose here too we've got some stems of pumpkins which are also an interesting kind of a food because they're not the sort of thing that's going to vanish quickly it's going to take a long time for them to rip this stuff apart although sometimes sometimes it seems like this stuff is more tender and soft and maybe more prone to absorbing moisture into itself and quicker to break down than other times I've seen chunks of potato I mean you know pumpkin stem go a long long time and other ones like these for some reason seem like they're breaking down quite rapidly this stem banana stem banana peel stem whatever was probably one of the ones from the last feeding because it seems like it's still quite intact obviously compared to that other one we encountered a moment ago and the stems are usually what you might expect to find leftovers of if you're feeding banana peels but sometimes after 11 days it's hard to find anything else it really does sort of depend I guess on a variety of different conditions maybe the worms themselves so I wouldn't be surprised if we found some banana peel that's what I think we're bumping into right here it's pretty thin almost paper thin so we're also starting to encounter some of the worm traffic down here in the feeding area and I'm already at the bottom okay I guess the system's not quite as deep as I thought it was I've got my prepared bedding here on the side which I thought we'd include some of as well here I'm finding like a little ball of it all kind of clumped together is usually not what I'm after I'd rather just see it all kind of get nibbled away gradually but if it's just tossed in here and clumps together and there's no reason for the worms to venture into it and through it it won't really show any signs of wear these little uh, circular objects are pieces of corn cob that I sliced up so we are encountering a little bit of leftover here. Here's another piece of the banana peel, probably from what they got last time. Really heavily worked. Quite nicely deteriorated for 11 days. So that's what they're going to get again. Another couple banana peels. This time they're also going to get those yummy watermelon rinds, which I doubt if we were to come back another 11 days from now that we would see many leftovers of that. That's just one of those sort of things that they really managed to burn through much more quickly than just about anything else it's certainly on their high on their list of favorites just other little chunks of you know corn cob here's actually a larger chunk of corn cob see a, a worm working its way down into the hollowed out middle of it I'm sure if I were to snap this thing in half we would find that the middle core of it's been nibbled out already this one actually seems like it's been in service for some time now but if you put corn cobs into your worm bins you really do need to anticipate that they're going to take a long long time before the worms can actually completely break it down that's if you leave it you know like the way i do where you just don't interfere with the breakdown process i'm always interested to see how they make slow steady progress but if i were to you know snap them into pieces or break them apart every time i encountered them then they would most certainly get consumed a lot more quickly but I usually opt to just leave them be. Okay, I feel like I'm kind of taking forever to get to this opposite end of the feeding area. <laughs> so let's excavate there too, open it up, see what remains. Here's another corn cob. This one I guess we had split open and hanging out down in the um, opening. You can see a few worms. Here's another little chunk. And I'm seeing a good bit of leftover bedding here, too. I, I guess whenever I see that, I feel like I've got a... There's another piece of banana peel. I just feel like I want to break it up a little bit, sort of blend it in with the surrounding materials so that the stuff has a good chance of getting broken down. I guess because I want to add more today. You know, I got my supply of the uh, the prepared bedding here. I replenished it not too long ago, so the um, the more aged end of the bin is this side where it's somewhat darker and... This more fresh side looks like it's got this interesting kind of fuzzy mold growing on it. <laughs> so 
So that's what I wanted to throw a handful of in here, down into the feeding area as the um, foundation for today's feeding, and then we'll uh, then we'll pile in the old and the new foods. Okay. I guess like I do sometimes since I'm putting frozen foods in here, sometimes I feel like I want to just let the worms retreat down into the material so that none of the frozen foods I pile in gets piled on top of any unsuspecting Worm. So let's give these little guys a moment or two to retreat down into the bedding and then we'll then we'll feed. So now, usually I try to take the worms off my gloves before I walk away for a moment or two, and here I'm noticing stuff that I think are not really my composting worms. I think these might be pot worms, which are usually um, found in most worm bins. It's like here, 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 here. I think those four are actually pot worms stuck to my glove. Maybe even right there on my fingernail, on my middle finger. Not too surprising that I missed them because potworms are really puny. And even over here, I believe a moment ago, I thought I had seen one out on top of something, but maybe it retreated. No, here it is. I'm fairly certain that what's right here is also a potworm. Perhaps not as small as you envisioned when I mentioned that they're generally pretty small, but I mean, even a, a baby composting worm this size would um, already exhibit kind of that pink color that you normally see in composting worms. So that's what makes me think that these are most likely pot worms. Pot worms don't cause any harm really. I guess you'll probably once in a while see outbreaks of them if there's a high degree of moisture or if there's, um, I think even acidic conditions might be ones that they favor and thrive in, which could also result in a little bit of a, a bloom. So I think we're going to proceed now with plopping in some of my prepared bedding here. It's sort of a mixture of the old and the new. And I think maybe if we sort of spread it out a little bit better and not leave big piles of it, maybe we'll have a better result, you know. By that I just mean we'll see more of it get um, nibbled away rather than just sit there in a big pile. So I took a little bit more time there than I normally do to sort of just spread it out into a thin layer. Now I've got two pumpkin, I mean two uh, banana peels, so we'll give one to this bin and we'll save the other one for the other system we're feeding as soon as we finish here. And um, let's see, here too we've got a number of yummy pieces of watermelon rind to include with this feeding. And it seems like there's four remaining, so these four we just gave them should make it an even split. And I've actually got probably about three days worth of coffee here in this container. It's quite a bit. So it's um, a little bit more than I feed usually. So it's a fairly generous application of coffee going in today. Oh yeah, I was also going to put in a little bit of this here, which is the pulverized eggshell. It's the stuff that I usually use as grit in my worm bins. And then another thing I usually like to include mixed in with the coffee is my worm chow. So let's, let's give them a whole bunch of this good worm chow to mix in with the coffee. I'll sort of blend it in with the coffee. And I guess in doing so it all sort of caused it to drop down onto the, uh, the bedding. And then we just bring in these um, old bits of food too. So some of these little worms that are hanging out on these old bits of food are probably wondering, oh my goodness, how did it get so chilly in here all of a sudden? <laughs> Placing them on top of a bunch of frozen banana peels and frozen watermelon rinds. Well, hopefully this stuff will thaw out soon enough and then they'll see it as nothing more than more food to nibble on. All right, I think we found all the collected bits of leftover food that we encountered along the way. 
I think we'll still continue to see little pieces of these potato peels everywhere. You know, I'll just continue to feel like I'm going to be required to break them up a little bit each time I find them to try to see if I can promote their breakdown. Here too, another stem of a banana. All right, let's let's get this bin covered up so we can let them get back to work, let them eat in peace, because we've still got another system we need to feed. I don't want to be down here all night, so let's, uh, here's more potato peel. Let's feel compelled to break it up. And here too, I guess a little shoot growing out of it. I just got this feeling that the potato peels and the shoots growing out of them, I think that this is, I think this is just something we're going to continue to see for a few more check-ins before it finally subsides. But if we can kind of bring an end to it more rapidly by, you know, busting up the potato peels or snapping any growth, you know, either stems or roots, we should be able to put an end to it soon, hopefully. Here and there, I'm still running into little bits of, you know, corn cob, little bits of bedding. I always feel like I want to see that stuff submerged down under the surface before I level things off. All right, so the one thing I don't have on hand, I mean, I do. They're behind me on the shelf. Maybe I should grab a couple. Nah, you know, I'm going to leave it off this time. Usually I put a feeding zone indicator down the middle to show ourselves where we last fed, but more recently I've been pretty much feeding down the middle in all my systems. So I don't think I need a way to find my way back to the feeding zone. I think we should be able to figure that out pretty easily next time we get back in here to feed. <laughs> so, onwards to bin number two. Yeah, things look pretty good in here. I can't complain. Definitely like the way these um, systems are coming along. Well, let's not speak too soon. Let's make sure the other one's doing well too. And then we'll give everything accolades. Onward. Okay, bin number two. So, you know, I usually um, kind of dawdle on bin number one, and on bin number two, I always feel like, hey, there's nothing new to see here. It's two, you know, pretty much identical bins. Shouldn't um, expect to see anything out of the ordinary or expect any surprises. So sometimes I tend to be a little bit more, you know, to the point and just get the feeding done in the second bin. It's usually the first bin where I'm a little bit curious to see what sort of stuff we're going to encounter. Here too, this potato peel was quite a ways down. And it, you know, grew and grew. Pierced to the surface. Started looking for some sort of light, I guess. Which plants like to do. And here I am bringing it into that. And at the same time, seeing if I could just bust up that little piece of potato peel to try to stunt any further growth of it. So here too, I'm assuming we're gonna probably bump into a few more um, banana peels from the last feeding. The one thing I don't remember seeing any of was the bread that went in with the banana peels last time. And I didn't really expect to find much, if any of it. I just sort of expected that bread would be one of those things that they just gobble up almost immediately. Okay. But here we are, banana peels, most likely from the last feeding. Even more of it here. I believe that's what this is. Yeah. Banana peel, so thin. Really getting worked hard. This, I believe, is um, potato attempting to grow. Little roots and stems and whatnot. While at the same time, the worms are attempting to eat it. <laughs> Although in this case, it seems more more like worm food than something attempting to grow. But I still just can't seem to resist trying to bust it up into somewhat smaller pieces if I could. It's just that when there's worms all over this stuff, I want to be careful not to injure the little wormies. Okay, here again, potato peels. Can't seem to resist the uh, urge to break them up. I'm assuming since we found a a stem of a pumpkin in the last system we'll probably find one in here too since we do try to treat our you know sister bins or buddy bins or whatever pretty similarly by giving them equal 
feedings and equal types of stuff. It makes for an interesting feeding, you know, to be able to compare what you're seeing in one bin to the uh, the other bin, knowing that they've been managed very similarly. And I believe here we go. Okay, I think it's coming back to me now. This is the one where I accidentally busted up the um, the, the stem of the pumpkin. So if I remember correctly, it was broken into three segments. And that's just one of them, so we should encounter a couple more. This is more potato, I think. It seems that way. It's just so weird, you know, because you're thinking it's peels, but once the, that shit starts to grow, and then there's stems and roots and everything else, and then it just starts to, you know, become an, another own its own thing, you know? doesn't seem like the peel of a potato anymore but that's exactly what that started out as all right oh here we go oh no I thought this was um just the stem of another banana I thought we had encountered another piece of the pumpkin stem oh here we go here's another piece of that pumpkin stem and you can see this was a pretty good size stem and it didn't take much force for me to snap it I just gave it a little bit of a squeeze, a gentle little squeeze, and it broke. One, two, three, right there in my hand. And I was a little bit disappointed when that happened because I do like to leave things to just break down on their own in the worm bins and not help them a whole lot, except in the case of the potato peels here, obviously. With the, um, with the pumpkin stems, I'm more, you know, treating them kind of the way I treat the the corn cob. Just leave it be, see what happens. Just that, um, sometimes it becomes a little bit of like a, a scavenger hunt. Because you know that there's a third piece of, um, broken up <laughs> stem of pumpkin floating around in here somewhere that you'd like to see if you can locate it, knowing that it's just probably right under your nose. And then sometimes you just need to call off the search and say, it's not worth the effort. Leave it be. You'll find it next time or during a future check-in. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just also intrigued by seeing the progress of different types of food items. So I'm always wanting to see how the, the corn cobs are progressing and, you know, how the stems of pumpkins are progressing. And I also, you know, obviously feel like I'd like to encounter the things that I know are here and not allow them to sort of slip by without me being able to check them out, but I've got to be realistic. I can't, you know, spend an entire evening down here trying to find a little chunk of broken pumpkin stem. Although it is kind of fun picking around your worm bins. i got to admit that. Yeah. I think we... I think we got to just focus now on making a large enough crevice down the middle here into which we could plop today's feeding and maybe just abandon the search for that other third piece of pumpkin stem it'll eventually come out in the wash we'll we'll run into it one of these days in the future but perhaps today it was just not meant to be you know one time once again like we did before i think we're gonna give these little worms a moment or two just to retreat down into the bedding so that we can um, pile in today's frozen watermelon bits and banana peels without worrying about placing them onto any unsuspecting worms that might not appreciate that. So why don't we give these guys, like we did the other bin, <laughs> there it is, piece number three. I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't draw out the <laughs> digging of the hole just to give myself time to find it. It just happened that way, so. Potato peel, can't resist breaking it. All right, let's give these little worms a moment or two to retreat and then we'll feed and we'll be finished. All right, so like we did before, Here's another couple worms on my finger. 
See, there's a red colored worm on my ring finger. That's the African night crawler. And on my pinky is the pot worm. So, um, usually I want to be careful to avoid plopping worms into my bedding supply. So, I'm going to be careful not to let that happen. So, we're going to be um, giving this a similar treatment here. Try to spread these shredded paper and cardboard and leaf bits around a little bit. Instead of just putting them in a big huge mound, make sure everything's got a good chance of getting broken down by the worms. And in goes today's feeding. Two very similar feedings to, for two very similar bins. I don't really see too many differences between the two, other than the uh, pumpkin stem being shattered in this one versus the uh, pumpkin stem in the other system still holding up pretty good although you saw how mushy it was beginning to get and how it was getting infiltrated by worms starting to crawl around down in it so maybe that pumpkin stem is going to end up getting broken pretty soon too and if it does it probably won't be done intentionally it'll probably just be with me attempting to be careful and me breaking it uh, inadvertently <laughs> So let's start bringing back the foods. I guess, you know, one thing I try to do is take these three pieces of pumpkin stem and keep them sort of near each other so that perhaps I'll find them all at the same time next time. So why don't we do it that way? I shouldn't press so hard. I might end up breaking it into further little chunks. <laughs> and then all these little pieces of corn cob, which are just going to continue to take time to break down. Leftover bits of banana stem. Which will also take a little bit more time, but not as much time as the corn cobs, that's for sure. And here's some of the bedding that we didn't manage to sink down in the hole. We just sort of were sloppy about it, and it ended up all over the place. And I think we got all the leftovers now, so let's start covering up this feeding zone. And I don't remember, did we check the outskirts of the other bin? Usually something I also like to do while I'm in my bins checking to see how things are doing is to make sure, you know, with all the attention the feeding area gets. Sometimes I also want to take a peek down the edges. It's another banana stem. Just to make sure things are doing okay. I think now that I'm doing it here, it's ringing a bell that we did actually do it in the other bin as well. So um, That's good though, you know, since nothing stood out about it, that means for the most part everything was normal, everything was good. And it's amazing. Look how many worms hanging out out there. No feedings applied to the outskirts. Always just sort of, you know, maybe some old, old leftovers getting nudged outwards gradually. But all the way out on the edge, all those worms hanging out in that material, that clearly means that this system's got sufficient moisture throughout and that the worms feel comfortable pretty much hanging out in any portion of the bin. That there's not like maybe a dry section that they're avoiding or anything like that. So, yeah, this is definitely a busy bin. I'm not sure if I saw quite so many worms in the other system. Although I'm pretty sure I launched both of these systems with an equal number of worms. Sometimes it just um, might seem that way too. Maybe it's just an illusion. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Yeah, at this point I'm really just trying to level things off. Here too, we just opted to take that feeding zone indicator, that coffee filter that was draped out over the center when we first arrived, showing us where we last fed, and we just sort of folded it in as supplementary bedding to go in with the feeding. And on this go around, we just don't have feeding zone indicators. Next time, we'll try to make an effort to reinstitute them. But at least we've got these top covering papers. A little something for the worms to come hang out on. You know, when all that moisture is recirculating beneath the plastic covering, it seems like a cool place to let some of the moisture drop onto and maybe pool up into little puddles or whatever. And all these castings on the paper, I think, are also clear evidence that the worms enjoy coming up to hang out there, too. So, I don't know. It just seems like a, a little extra something to include in my bins for the worms to sort of have a little variety, a little extra weird unusual place to go explore other than just being down in the bin. I just feel like I should really make an attempt to leave these castings in the bin rather than 
hauling them over to the sink. <laughs> so let's see if we could drop some of these back into the bin rather than leaving them on my glove. That I think usually means to me a little bit extra moisture in here than we need, but hey, for 158 day old system, there's plenty of time to let this system dry out. Let's give them the moisture they crave and it'll probably even help us, you know, see better progress of the um, breakdown of the materials in here over time. All right, everyone, that's it for today's check-in with these now 158 day old African night crawler bins after 11 days getting their 15th feeding. And I've got some cleaning up to take care of, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that, that's boring. Before I go, really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Bye now.